can be the soul. Short play by N. N. Lenina. Setting. Kia's living room has one chair and one table on top of the carpet. A photo of a priest is on the table. A knock on the door is heard. Then a voice is heard in footsteps approaching. Cassandra enters with one bag of rubbish. Hello? No! Tia! Estás igualita como en las fotos, no lo puedo creer. Después de todo, acá estoy. Acá, acá estamos, perdón. Ay, no, mi tía. Aunties, uh, tía. No, I don't know of any aunties here. Wow, oh my God. No lo puedo creer. Ay, no. Además de todo lo que ha pasado entre tú y la familia, muchas, pero muchísimas gracias por dejarme quedar contigo. No sabes cuánto significa esto para mí. Ay, Canada, es hermoso, ¿no? Ya entiendo por qué te has quedado tanto tiempo acá. Pues no vi mucho, pero no manches. Está bien padre todo. Empezando con las montañas. Hasta el frío está bien chido, ¿no? Bueno, chido no, pero pues es súper cool. Cuando la nieve cae, siento como si Tlaloc me quisiera tocar. Si ¿Sí recuerdas quién es Tlaloc, ¿no? Tlaloc, um... Sun God? Días de la lluvia, tía, come on. Y cuando me envuelvo en el piso con la nieve, siento como. como si estuviera en la loca. Es un paraíso. Ya sabes, en México cuando hay frío, no es frío, frío. Es más fresquito. Pero acá el frío es ya de veras, como puro. Como dicen los gringos, white the driven snow. Ay. Ay. No algo así. Ay, el inglés está bien pinche difícil. ¿Cómo le hiciste? White the driven snow. Ay, a la chingada. Allá en Montreal sí hace frío, frío. Y así de primeras, te lo digo igual que lo sabes. Acá me quedo a vivir. Sí. No sabes lo difícil que era llegar acá. Tuve que rogar para trabajar en una construcción para... Please de... Stop. Stop. Please stop whatever this is you're doing. No one comes into a stranger's house, especially my house, and acts like this. What do you want? I, I will not buy anything that you are selling. <laughs> I have everything I need, kept neat and safe. Who are you and, and what do you want? ¿Cómo? ¿Quién soy yo? Pues soy tu sobrina, la hija de Patty. ¿Tu hermana? Si sí recuerdas a Patty, ¿no? La que mintió a mi abuelo diciéndole que te iba a llevar a la plaza, pero en verdad te llevaba a la cancha a jugar con los chicos de la colonia. ¿Recuerdas? Todos los jueves te llevaba cuando estabas bien chiquitita. Patty. ¿Patricia? ¡Sí! ¡Tu hermana! ¡Y yo soy tu sobrina! ¡Y Sandra! ¡Y Sandra! ¡Y me vine para quedar contigo! ¡Ay, tía! ¡I love you! ¡Thanks you so much! I happy um, live con tía. <laughs> um, enough problem. No, eso no. Um, happy live today. Ay, a la chingada. Pero de verdad, tía, gracias. Gracias por dejarme quedar contigo, de verdad. What do you mean? ¿Cómo? What do you mean you're staying with me? ¿No te habló mi mamá? No, I don't talk to any who claim to be my family. Pues, qué raro. Me dijo que te contó todo sobre mis planes de quedarme en Canadá y que tú me ibas a ayudar. ¿Por qué me mintió así? Excuse me. She said that I, the one who was a disgrace to the family, the one that left everything behind, would help you. Someone I've never met or ever cared to think about. That I'd help you stay here with me. <laughs> you people are crazier than I remember. Te lo juro es neta, tía. Ay, no te agüites. Seguro me lo dijo por algo. Ella siempre tiene un plan. Y al final del día, somos una familia. No importa si no nos conocimos, nos podemos conocer ahora. Porfa, tía, no te eches para atrás. Esto es más grande que nosotras. Dame chance por lo menos, please, tía. You and your impure mother cannot come and abuse me like this. I am old. I'm... Wait, what about your status? How, how do you plan to get a job and live? My government is generous, but not that generous. 
You say you have been in Montreal, so let me guess. You've been partying for six months, used up all the time on your tourist visa, and now you want to continue the party by bringing it to my house. You're an alien, Isandra. What are you doing? You are now a big time interloper. But not just to me, but to this whole space. My home, wake up! You can't abuse us like this. Wake up and do things right. Family or not, I will not be your accomplice. Go back! Como me llamaste? What? Me llamaste inter qué? Interloper. And yes, yes, I did call you one because you are coming in all unannounced and Pollyannic. Need I remind you that you, we're in a pandemic? Everything and everyone is crazy. And you want to come in and make yourself comfortable when we're at our weakest? No, 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 I don't think so. Isandra, did you hear me? You can't stay here. This, this isn't what you do. ¿Recuerdas esto? Mi mamá te lo mandó. Caminó hasta Juquila para conseguírtelo. Is that so? So my sister decided to do a pilgrimage for me, and for what? To purge her own sins in disguise of my own. No, no, no. My God is generous, but not that generous. Prisa para pasar tiempo con usted. Yeah, right. Sí, es verdad. Aunque no lo creas, hay gente que sigue pensando en ti. Es más, hay gente que te sigue queriendo después de todo lo que hiciste. Oh, and what is what, what is it that I did? Te fuiste. Yes. Dejaste toda tu familia. Of course I did. Y solo por un hombre. Uh, no, this is where you're all wrong. Wrong. No creo, tía. Mira. Hasta tienes una foto de la acá. Sandra grabs the photo of the late priest. Dejaste a tu familia por un cura. <laughs> no, tía, no, no puede ser. No, don't touch him. He has nothing to do with anything. He is gentle and loving, pure. Not like your mother and her wicked pilgrimage. She only did that so I could take you in, and I won't, I swear. I won't do it. Leave, go back to your country. No. No me voy a ningún lado. Excuse me, are you testing me? Te podría preguntar lo mismo, tía. You poor, poor, stubborn girl. Out, now! ¿Quién es ese hombre? None of your business, now go! Tía, no estás bien. Yo te puedo ayudar. Yo te puedo cuidar. Out, before I call the police. I don't want to hear you or see you again. Out! ¿Por qué te fuiste? ¿Por qué dejaste tu país para esto? El frío, la soledad. ¿Cura? ¿Por qué? Quiero saber. Merecemos saber, chingada madre. Don't you understand? I don't want you here. You are not welcome. Get it through your head. ¿Por qué nunca nos hablaste? Don't touch ¿Por me. ¿Por qué nos odias tanto? Me. Dime, no, dime. dime. Me. Me. Let me know. The photo of the priest drops and the frame breaks. Behind the photo of the priest, there's another photo. I'm sorry, Brian. Please forgive me. I swear I won't put the both of you together again. I swear. ¿Quién es esta? She's, she's Carmen. Oh, Brian, you knew about it. You knew. That's why you cared for me as you did and for so long. You knew I couldn't go back. I remember that feeling of death creeping in like the bubbles that slip out of your mouth when you drown. Here, reach. This beautiful creature is life and death in one photo. She was so wonderful and affectionate, pure. She had this dimple. Well, actually, she had two, but this one, the one on the right, the one I'm talking about, it was so different. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. You can't see it in this photo because she or she was trying to be provocative despite me trying to get her to smile, but her dimple, I... I swear there was something about it. Yes, that was her good side, the right. And for some divine reason, the dimple was what made her good side good. Why? How can one fleck be the soul of a painting? Who decides that? You never knew, Brian, but you love to talk about it just as much as I did. You even said once that maybe after a billion years, God questioned the details like the details Always question God. Why did I put this here? Not long ago you were safe and warm. And now look at you shattered into shattering. ¿Quién es la mujer, tía? Por it favor. It doesn't matter who she is. She's pure. ¿Y qué pasó? She disappeared. Just like that. 
around the time she disappeared. I received a photo of us kissing in her car. On the back it said she was waiting for me along with all the men from Amalucan, waiting to teach me. Por favor, tía, no es necesario. You Basta wanted ya. to know. Well, here it is. This is what you <laughs> asked for. They wanted to rape me like they did her. To teach me that an, a man will always fuck better, provide better, live better. Anything and everything better than, than this, you, a woman. So what do you think I did? I left. I left my family, my friends, Carmen, everyone. I left so I could live because I drowned that day. Only I drowned facing up. You wouldn't know, but not even the purest love can make you hear the sounds of life like death can. I fled. ¿Y por qué crees que estoy acá? De verdad. Ahí estoy rogando para encontrar trabajo en Montreal y ahora rogándote a ti para que me ayudes. ¿Tú crees que todo esto me parece divertido? ¿Tú crees que todo me vale madre, verdad? No, tía. Tú no sabes. Esto no es divertido. Esto es necesario. Los años han perpetuado los riesgos en México. El México que tú conoces ya no es. Es peor. No hay suficientes palabras para pintarte el miedo que México ha creado en mi cuerpo. Yo no puedo confiar en mi futuro viviendo ahí. Parte de nuestro patrimonio como mexicanas es el cáncer del miedo. No se puede soñar cuando hay balazos que te despiertan. Las fiestas son siluetas de lamento. Yo como mujer no puedo disfrutar todo lo bueno de mí. Todo lo que has dicho se ha perpetuado en mitos de inseguridad que tu cuerpo aún no conoce. Y ahora que me has contado lo tuyo, más entiendo por qué estoy acá. Mírame, toda una canadiense. Ni hablas español y das la espalda a tu origen a tu familia, pero igual, mírate, cagándote de miedo como si nunca te fuiste. No, you are wrong. I left and I am not scared anymore. That fear that has been created in your body no longer dwells in mine. I can enjoy the best parts of me again. I can dream. I haven't been scared ever since I met Brian. He took care of me like no one else ever did. ¿Y qué? ¿Este Brian te dio salvación a cambio de tu cuerpo? How stupid do you have to be to ask that? You don't know anything about him or of his fidelity. You have no right. No, no sé nada del Brian o de con quién era fiel. Pero sí sé que un ciego no necesita su palito para saber que va a llover. It's none of your business. But you wouldn't understand anyways. Judge all you want. You are the one stuck in limbo. You think moving to Canada will solve all your problems? Papers or no papers? <laughs> no, no, no. It's clear that you don't understand anything. No, I will not be to you what Brian was to me. You really have nobody. So go back. Save yourself. Go back before your days become years. I really would hate to hear that you've drowned. No, tía. Tú eres la que está en el limbo. Júzgame todo lo que quieras. Pero tú y yo... Somos iguales, las dos iguales, entre miedo y miedo buscando fe. Solo que yo floto para algún día nadar. Y aunque sé que hay un chingo de monstruos abajo del agua, sé que el monstruo más terrible es el agua misma. Y, oh, so, so I see, you know. Y well, nadaré wait. porque soy, y porque soy mucho más. Pero eso no lo entenderías. No te preocupes, yo me voy, pero esta pulsera se queda. Mi mamá pasó días caminando en la selva para regalarte esto. No tiene mucho valor, pero si quieres, te puede brindar todo lo que has perdido. Cuídate, tía. Gracias por mostrarme lo que es el miedo. 
pensé que lo había conocido, pero resulta que se perpetúa con los años como nunca imaginé. Cuídate. Sebastian Young. We open on the inside of a small laundromat. Jean enters, holding her full laundry bag. She casually puts her laundry in the machine, pays for the load, and turns the machine on. She wanders around the laundromat, clearly bored. Sasha now enters. He's wearing his earbuds and carrying his laundry bag. Jean watches him as he loads his laundry in and pays in his quarter, then presses the start button, but nothing happens. Are you kidding me? What kind of a... Just work. Why can't you just work? Come on. Hey, you. Uh, hello, can you hear me? I I I'm talking to you. Did you just... Did you just throw something at me? Yeah. Do you think it's okay to throw things at strangers in public? Well, no. <laughs> well, sometimes. For example, when you're minding your own business and you see someone who's physically assaulting a laundry machine. Well, it's not working and I'm frustrated and I don't have time for this. Then maybe you should pick up the quarter that I threw at you and try putting it in the machine. What are you talking about? I just put 50 cents in. It's 75, it's three quarters. No, it's two quarters. It's always been two quarters. See, here, load laundry, add detergent, shut door, insert three quarters. You're welcome. You know, it's, it's going. Could be better, but. <laughs> yeah, on, uh, on Wednesday. What? Hey, hold on a sec. What's up? What? What? Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking on the phone with someone. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's nothing, I can talk. Yeah. So yeah, it was uh, Wednesday last week. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it, I'm okay. Really. Yeah, well, it was a long time coming, you know. I don't know, it doesn't really feel real yet. She's just been sick for so long. Uh, we're not really sure yet. She wanted to be cremated, so we don't have to rush anything. So we're probably gonna wait and give the whole family a chance to come. You'll be welcome too, of course. You know, she always loved you. Okay, well, uh, listen, I gotta go, I'm at, uh, the laundromat right now, and I don't really feel like crying next to the woman sitting next to me, so. <laughs> All right, talk later. Bye. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry for your loss. Were you close? Close to, oh, right. Yeah, we were, well. As close as we could be, given the circumstances. It was my mom. <laughs> Sorry. This feels weird saying that out loud to a complete stranger. My mom is dead. Oh my god. I'm so sorry, what happened? Um, no, you know what, no, no, <laughs> I'm being nosy, don't tell me, I'm sorry. Yeah. That is unless you want to. You must be heartbroken. 
No, it's fine. I mean, yes, I would like to stop talking about it, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm fine, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both my parents are still alive, so I probably won't have to deal with all that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know how you're feeling, though. I've lost some close friends. It's really hard. No, you so don't. So who are you talking to? Do you always ask so many questions? Whoa. Jeez, man. Just bored waiting for my laundry and just trying to have a friendly little conversation. Well, clearly I don't want to talk, so can you just leave me alone and let me listen to my music while I wait for my laundry? It's just that... No, it's fine. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. I'm not trying to be rude or anything. It just... No, I... I get it. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Thanks. You hear Dane, and Jean stands up to retrieve her laundry. I, I feel like I might have been a bit harsh. I just wanted to apologize. No, whatever. I was just being friendly. It was my ex-girlfriend, if you really want to know. Don't care. All right. How long were you two together? <laughs> two years. Why did you break up? Why did we break up? What kind of a question is that? It's a touchy subject. Uh, is that something you're not supposed to ask? You said she was your ex. It seemed like a reasonable question. Yeah, I said she was my ex. What do you want me to say? My dog walker? My aunt? My fucking dermatologist? You, you brought it up. I figured you wanted to talk about it. I thought it might be nice for you to get it off your chest, but I guess not. I guess I'm socially handicapped and should never engage in casual conversation again. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. I mean, do, do I look like I want to talk about anything? No, no, I didn't want to fucking talk about it. Not like that. Like you said, a friendly little conversation. I'm fine with that. You know, yeah, I was talking to my ex. Oh, geez, it must be really emotional for you. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Great, thanks. That's it. Not it was my ex. Oh, I know your mom just died, but why'd you guys break up? Like, oh my God, that's so crazy. Can you take a hint? Like, what is wrong with you? Holy fuck, can this laundry take any longer? <laughs> you know, sometimes I feel like her, like my mom, or at least how she was before yesterday. You know how many years she was sick for? So many that I lost count. So many that I stopped making sure she knew she wasn't alone. At some point, I accepted that the mom I knew was gone and that I had to move on. But I haven't moved on. She's moved on and I haven't. I've been stuck in place, paralyzed, barely living. I wonder if she can see me now. She finally knows how pathetic my life has turned out. I have nothing. No family, no friends, no girlfriend. I have no passion whatsoever. I should have known. My mom should have taught me that everyone you love in this world, anyone you need, will leave you, will let you down, will break your heart. It's funny, you know, you're the first person I've had a real life conversation with in, I don't even know how long. And what's the point? All you've done is made me more upset. All anyone ever does is make me more upset. You then hear Dane, his laundry is done. <laughs> don't, don't wash your clothes. No, don't dry your clothes. Off. Ah, don't air your dirty clothes in public. That's the phrase, right? Something about not talking about your personal problems in public? That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I dry my dirty clothes in public? I mean, when you think about it, the phrase really doesn't make much sense. I mean, why would anyone dry dirty clothes and in public? It's just impractical. But maybe that kind of person doesn't care about practicality. Maybe. They actually enjoy the discomfort of it. Who knows? Someone could love watching people's faces crumple up in disgust as they walk by and inhale the fumes of the various body odors wafting from the dirty clothes set up to dry. Who knows? People are sick, right? I guess I'm sick. My mom was sick. My mom was sick, and now she's dead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK, man, I'm sorry, but you done? Am I done? No, I'm not done. I'm. You know what? Fine. I'm done. <laughs> Look, I 
tried to have a friendly conversation. You, d you didn't want that. Instead, you just used me as an emotional rag doll. And I, and I don't know you. And yes, I'm, I'm sure all that shit you're going through sucks and is hard. And I get that. But if you even think for a second that it makes you special, you're wrong. Everyone has shit, but they deal with it. They get help and they get through it. They don't dump it on some stranger at the first opportunity. Your mom died and I'm, and I'm really sorry about that. I am. But I, I don't even think that's what's really bothering you. What I see is an anger with the world. And I, and I see you and I see a guy who's wasted his life feeling sorry for himself. A guy who's always wondered why no one will help him, but has never wondered why nobody wants to help him. It's hard. Being a stupid fucking human being stuck on this dumb planet with our stupid fucking monkey brains is hard. But, but what, you can, what can you do? It is what it is, and all we can do is do better. And it might seem impossible sometimes, but you can always be better. And I, I'm not going to lie to you. I've had a really hard week. A really hard week. And I've been going through it. But I know that I have to keep going and I have to keep pushing myself to be the best that I can be. That's easy for you to say your mom's not dead, your girlfriend didn't leave you, your problems are nothing compared to mine, so I don't want to hear it. How fucking dare you? You have no idea what I'm going through or what I've been through. What makes you think that you have the right to talk to me that way? Well, I know that your parents aren't dead. You said so yourself. I know that you're a pretty girl, which probably means you have plenty of friends and plenty of guys that want you. Past that, I don't really care. I know who you are. You're like everyone else I despise. You belong. You've always belonged, and you blame me for not belonging. So I don't want to hear it, okay? You don't understand, and you never will. Jean removes the quarter from her pocket, places it on the seat, quietly stands up. She grabs her sopping wet laundry from the dryer, puts it in her laundry bag, and leaves. I'm sorry. I want to call the cops or whatever, tell them to send me to the metal house. I get it. I probably need it. I am trying. Even if you think I'm not. I know I have to be better. I know I have to be kinder to myself and everyone else, and I can do it. I know I can. But I just feel so alone. And sometimes, just feels like it's too late. Like nobody will believe me if I show them that I'm better. Look, can we just like, start over? I won't have another mental breakdown. I promise. I'll go first. I'm Sasha. What's your name? I said, I'm sorry. What more do you want from me? Good? 
there's just this guy that I made out with at the party at Alpha Delta last week, and we kind of got pretty far. But then someone came in and kicked us out of the closet, and he saw me. But I pretended that I didn't see him because I wasn't sure what to say. Because obviously, like, we weren't actually a thing. But what if he wants us to be a thing? Or what if deep down I want us to be a thing? Or what? Shut if up, or I'll puke again. <laughs> Better? Good. The world's already spinning enough without... Sorry. Yeah, it was my decision to get this drunk, not yours. Can I get you anything? Yeah, a time machine so I can go back to three hours ago and punch myself in the face. Sorry. Stop saying sorry. So they sit in silence for a moment. Rachel moans. She looks like shit. Are you sure you're okay? Peachy. You're a first year. Mm. Shouldn't waste your time at parties like these. They're full of shitty people getting shit-faced. You're here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rachel double overs again, sticking her head over the toilet. After a moment, Rachel straightens back up. Katie recoils a little. It's just vomit. It won't kill you. God, I want a drink. But you're... Yes. That means all the alcohol has gone from in here to in there. So not only do I have to sit on the floor of a frat bathroom puking into a toilet that probably hasn't been cleaned since Trudeau number one was prime minister, I have to do it sober. Is that really so bad? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Did something happen? Well, I didn't almost run into a guy I kissed once. Right, sorry. I know I sounded dumb. I said not to say sorry. And it probably doesn't remember you, you know. They usually don't. Really? That was the first time I kissed a boy. Oh. I know, I'm pathetic. Uh, that's not what I was going to say. What were you going to say? Uh, get it, girl. <laughs> was it uh, good, at least? I don't know. It was very slobbery. And I didn't expect the tongue to be so bare. Like, I knew there could be tongue. Like, I've read books and stuff. I know what kissing with tongue is, but okay, it doesn't really make any sense. Why do people make such a big deal about it? It's just this weird, damp, meat tentacle that people put in each other's mouths and wiggle around. And why? Who thought that was a good idea? Who thought that was fun or sexy? It's just weird. I mean, objectively, everything to do with kissing is weird. <laughs> but then why does everyone like it so much? Whenever people kiss on TV, you know, or in books, oh, I feel something. It's like my heart tenses. Mm, I don't think that's your heart. And I've, <laughs> and I've waited so long. Yeah, it's probably just a bad kiss. You think? Oh, yeah. Most of them suck. Yeah, people don't kiss because of love at first sight or being struck by beauty or whatever. <laughs> nah, they kiss because they're bored and lonely and it's something to do. That's it. I mean, sometimes you get lucky. When it's good, it's, yeah, it's really good. But uh, most of the time, it's just a thing that happens. Is it always like that for you? That sounds lonely. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> Why do you even care about this stuff? Well. I know it's stupid, but I didn't really do much in high school. I mean, I had friends and stuff, but there was never anything like epic. So I thought, well, nobody knows me here. I, maybe I can show up and be someone new. Who would you want to be? I don't know. Someone like you. You probably kissed like so many guys and had tons of sex in all the different ways. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know all this stuff, and you get drunk, and you don't care if I like you. Or That's because I don't care about you, not because I don't want to be and liked. And you've probably gone to, you've probably gone to parties and done drugs and stuff. You want to do drugs? Oh, uh, well, no, not do drugs, but you know, be the sort of person where if people around me were doing drugs, I would know how they worked. Like the option would be there, but I, I wouldn't take it. Uh huh. Okay, you you don't get it. You're cool. I'm 21 and puking into a toilet at a frat party. But you're like unapologetic about it. You're owning it. I refuse to take ownership for this. No, just pretend you're someone you're not. If you want to be unapologetic, stop apologizing. 
if you want to get kissed, kiss people first. After a while, you just start doing it automatically. Well, I just thought that for once, someone might actually think I was pretty, might, without me having to change anything. <laughs> You're not gonna say something. If I uh, knew the magic words to fix people's mental issues, I wouldn't be sitting next to this toilet. I'd be in my apartment reading a book and uh, eating a salad or something. That's what you want to be doing with your evening. Obviously not. But it's what I'm going to wish I'd been doing when I wake up tomorrow. If you hate it so much, why are you even here? Because if I wasn't drunk, I'd have to be sad and alone and sober. But you're sad and alone and sober here. <laughs> not for a lack of trying. Sometimes when I'm drunk, I forget how to feel things, emotionally and physically. Are you sure you're right? Do you want anything? Like a hug? Don't touch me. Right. I'm just trying to say, if you keep spending all your energy nervous and worrying and trying to make everyone accept you, yourself happy four years later, you're gonna end up next to a toilet by yourself, puking your guts out, and uh, trying to forget how bitter and unlovable you are. You're not unlovable. <laughs> okay, come on. What do you know about love? You've got your head stuck in a mid-90s rom-com. Do you have a problem with me? What? Well, you're just saying all these things. You barged in on me in the bathroom. So you wanted to be alone? Yes. Okay, no, I mean, I don't, I don't know, it's complicated. How? Okay, you said you'd be happier if you stayed home, so why not just stay home? Why didn't you stay home? Because I've never done this before. Well, I've never been able to do this before. I've never been to university, I've never been to parties, and you're right. Uh, maybe I'm worrying too much or making too big a deal out of all this, but it's still exciting. <laughs> Even when it... It sucks, it's exciting. And when it stops being exciting, I can stop. But you're still going and you clearly aren't happy. I don't get it. There's always one moment whenever I go out, 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever, when I just, it's like time isn't real. There's no 10 minutes ago, there's no tomorrow. Everything's just beautiful and fascinating and everyone is beautiful and I'm funny and clever and interesting. <laughs> I just feel like I'm sparkly. I don't know how to explain it. It's like the enti entire world is holding its breath and anything could happen. But then I drink too much, or I say the wrong thing, or I puke in this fucking toilet, and none of my friends are there because I was too out of it to keep track of where they were. And the next morning, I have to wake up, and there's just me. I'm sorry. I told you to stop saying sorry. I'm sorry, too. You're right. I was a dick. <laughs> I'm good at being a dick. Well... Maybe you should just pretend you're someone you're not. After a while, you'll start doing it automatically. That sounds gross. Who told you to do that? <laughs> this dick. <laughs> well, doubles over again. This time, Kitty grabs her hair. Is that the last of it? I uh, should get back to the party. Yeah. Do you know what? I really want McDonald's. Yeah. Do you want to go get some? Sure. They get up and walk away from the toilet. Hey, what's your name? Katie. Rachel. The end.
Creature Speaks, a short play by Issa Yu. The silhouette of M stands before the crumpled figure on the ground. She raises a rock in her hands and brings it down forcefully. Legs cut out on impact. In the darkness, we feel, hear her wail. Legs up. M, 19, is brought into the interrogation room in handcuffs by a young police officer. Disheveled, she's wearing a white, white beater, and it's splattered with blood. Detective Kate Reed and Detective Gary Smith already sit waiting in the room. Smith gestures at M to take a seat across from him. M sits down. The other officer leaves. Jesus. Why didn't anyone think to get her a change of clothes? All right. So let's go over your record. M nods, though she doesn't look very pleasant. Her face is tear-streaked, though she's not crying at the moment. You have the right to remain silent. Any statement you make needs to be freely and voluntarily given. You have the right to the presence and representation of a lawyer before you make any statement and during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, you are entitled to the presence and representation of a court-appointed lawyer before you make any statement and during any questioning. Do you understand? We will be recording this conversation. Any statement you make will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand? You need to answer me verbally. M glances at the recorder on the table, nods again. Yes, I understand. Okay, let's begin. As we understand it, your father was found dead on the evening of the 27th. Your neighbors heard your screaming and called the police. You were found lying unconscious next to him. Is he actually dead? Yes, he was pronounced dead on scene. You were there. Well, given the circumstances, we naturally have some questioning. Can you remember what happened before you passed out? I, he was bleeding, I couldn't stop it. Can you tell us what happened before that? There was shouting, screaming too. Someone else was there too, I think. Who did they look like? Um, I have trouble remembering. And begins to have a panic attack. She claws at her throat as she struggles to breathe. The handcuffs make an awful clinking noise. We'll stop here today. Uh, an officer will be with you shortly. Liam Smith exits. Detective Kate Lee and Detective Gary Smith, already sitting in the waiting room interrogation room. M is brought into the interrogation room in handcuffs by a young police officer. She's no longer wearing the bloody white beater. Instead, it's wrapped in a green crew neck t-shirt and gray tracksuit. M sits down. The other officer leaves. You're entitled to the presence and representation of a court-appointed lawyer before you make any statement and during questioning. We will be recording the conversation. Any statement can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand? You need to answer me verbally. Got it. How are you feeling? Fine. Well, uh, let's continue where we left off then. You mentioned there being someone else. Can you describe them? Anything helps? It was dark, so I couldn't make out his face. About six feet tall, 190 pounds, maybe. Not sure, though. Came in through the front door. We usually keep it unlocked during the day. I see. Anything else? I'm afraid not. OK, uh, let's switch gears. Can you tell us a bit more about your father? What? Shouldn't you be asking me more details about that night? Do you have more to say about that night? Not really, I just figured. It'll help us understand who he was, what kind of enemies he might have had. Oh, so you're searching for a possible motive? Exactly. Hmm. Well, he was a retired professor, a religious man, which isn't surprising for the town we live in. He didn't drink or smoke, didn't get into fights, 
Was he friendly with anyone? He liked to keep to himself, so no. He wasn't exactly a social butterfly around town, and he wanted me to be the same. How was he as a father? Strict, uptight. Look, I don't see why this is relevant. Oh? Why don't you go chase down that lead I gave you? The man that broke in. Bullshit. Excuse me? You check your neighbor's security camera. You were the only person that went through the front door that evening. Or maybe it was through a window. If you're gonna try to send us on a wild goose chase, you better think your statement's pretty risky. Ah. I guess that explains this. And shakes her handcuffs in the direction of his car. What do you think happened? We want to know what you think happened. <laughs> Jesus, are you a shrink or a cop? Okay, fine, I did it. I killed him. There's your confession. Case closed. Not so fast. We need a bit more detail than that. Oh? We want to know more about you and your father, your relationship, why you did what you did, was it premeditated, etc. Does, does it matter? It seems pretty cut and dry. Thou shall not kill and all that. The asshole's dead, so I pay for my actions. Well, the details are what determines the charges. In that case, just put me down for whichever one gets the death penalty. We don't have the death penalty in this country. I didn't do anything wrong. He deserved it. To die? Yeah. What did he do? What, you want a laundry list? He was violent and abusive. He threatened to kill me. Didn't need a bottle to do that. And he hated that his only kid was a daughter. And he blamed me for my mother's leaving. He liked to play doctor. He molested you? No. M lifts up the hem of her t-shirt. Across her stomach are scars, the kind you get from surgery. He took things out and put things in. He liked to play God. Jesus Christ, you gotta be kidding me. You should have called the police. I have. Nothing came of it. You didn't say nothing about him slicing you up, did you? No. Your high school had on record that someone reported problems in your home life. But you told them everything was fine. I did. What was a dumb public school counselor gonna do for me? What did we stop thinking? Uh, we spoke to this friend of yours, Ellen. Leave her out of this. What the fuck did you tell her? Sit down before we make you. We didn't tell her you were a suspect. Thought she might have figured that out by herself now. Tell me about Ellen. M rubs her face, the handcuffs clicking into silence. She saved my soul. She was my salvation. <laughs> yeah, here you are. So what happened to your so-called soul? He threatened her. I had to leave for her safety. Jesus. I thought I could be good, and if I was good enough, I could one day earn his approval and then things would be the way that they ought to be and he would start being a good father. I thought if only I wasn't what I was, then he would finally love me. <laughs> hey, it was foolish of me. Do you know how he talked to me? He was a bit of a Bible thumper, you know? Call me a lot of things. Devil, <laughs> creature, wench, bitch, demon, <laughs> Eve. Bit on the nose, really. Very Old Testament. But what has the Bible done for me? Do you think I would be here if my fucking guardian angel showed up? If God just did something? I spent 17 years hating myself and wanting to carve myself into whatever he wanted, and it was never enough. And there was a time I wanted to kill myself. But then I realized that he's the one who should die. And God didn't save me. And neither did he stop me. So that was my go-ahead. You want to know how I did it? I wanted it to be agonizing. I wanted to make him suffer in pain. And I wanted him to pay for all the misery he's caused me. I picked the perfect rock from his yard. And it didn't take long for him to die. You should have seen the look on his face. I terrorized him. I know I did. 
He tortured me for 19 years, and he suffered less than five minutes. Talk about mercy. So there's your confession. He made me in his image. I take after him in his awfulness. And when I get out, I'm going to find his grave and desecrate it. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have anything else to ask at this time. I could have been good. He turned his back. I was born of his flesh and blood, and I was made in his fucking image, and he turned his back on me. Anything else to add? No. Lee shuts off the recorder. The two detectives get up to leave. Word of advice. Get a good lawyer and make sure they get you to do a psych test. You think I'm insane? No. I just think you're going to be left to rot in jail if you use one of the court assigned lawyers. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to head out now. Son will be short with you shortly to transfer you. Okay. Wait. He's dead, right? So why does it still hurt? around, turning her neck in the process. She stops, and it's as if all the tension in her body seeps out. She's tired. Why couldn't he have loved me better? Yeah. 